Remington Aidney Campbell, and this is the History of Musical Theatre podcast. And it is our ninth and final episode covering the musical West Side Story, and we're going to talk about it from after the film up to the next film. So rather than from stage to screen, it's from screen to different screen. I want to start with a little anecdote fact thing that comes from the wonderful Shireen Pimentel who is currently teaching a West Side Story deep dive class for Broadway Weekends. By currently, I mean when this episode comes out, she'll have taught two classes and have two to go, but right this minute she's only taught one. She's wonderful, though. There was this tenement housing that was largely lived in by African American and Latino families that were torn down to make space for the Lincoln Center, which is a massive, huge, big deal theater in New York. In the intervening time, though, the empty lot was used to shoot large portions of the original West Side Story film. West Side Story, like so many shows before it and since, has kind of a complicated legacy. Shireen Pimentel played Maria in the most recent stage revival, but give me a couple of minutes and I'll get there. By a couple, I do mean, like, most of the episode. Stephen Sondheim's next show was A Funny Thing That Happened on the Way to the Forum, and it debuted in 1962, even though he'd begun work on it before he even started Gypsy. He was a fairly prolific writer. In the interim, he'd also begun writing a little of Anyone Can Whistle and some musical interludes for the play Invitation to a March. Forum was a farce, with mistaken identity, just missing the person you were looking for, and the like. Jerome Robbins, in order to agree to get Sondheim to write Gypsy, had arranged for Gypsy's producer, David Merrick, to also fund Forum. Finally, a show that will go simply, smoothly, and not have... No, there was a problem. This show had hitches of farcical proportions. Someone should make a show a funny thing happened on the way to a funny thing happened on the way to to a Forum, and then they can just call it, like, Forum Forum? I don't know. If you like the idea, call me. Firstly, after falling out around Gypsy, Jerome Robbins swore to never work with Merrick again, a promise that he did actually keep. This made him directing Forum complicated, to say the least. Merrick agreed to release his option on the show. He wouldn't produce it. Sondheim refunded him his money, and apparently this was uncharacteristically gentlemanly of Merrick. So Jerry was free to direct, right? Right? Oh, sweet, naive child. He agreed, and then went on a holiday to Paris, and decided not to. I'm annoyed at Jerome Robbins now, and I've had zero years of crossover with him in my life. He he was dead before I was born, and I'm still annoyed at him. Hal Prince agreed to produce, which he initially wasn't interested, but now was for reasons and brought on his former boss, George Abbott, to direct. Their choreographer was Jack Cole, who was one of the greats of that era. A little note about Jack Cole, while he's not super well known in contemporary musical theatre, he basically invented theatrical jazz dance. Like, no biggie or anything. He also choreographed Marilyn Monroe's Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. And finally, finally... There was a production team. Mostly. Except the show wasn't doing great in previews. Particularly Jack Cole's movement wasn't really working. So Jerry was brought in to show Doctor. There's some disagreement among both historians and the production team itself as to whether the show didn't work because it needed edits, or if the Washington DC audience just had different tastes in comedy to the New York ones. In New York, though, the show was a hit. It ran for two years and won most of the Tony Awards. Best Musical, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best Producer, which is a category I don't think they have anymore. Best Book, Best Direction. In fairness, it wasn't a super competitive season. The other really strong contender that year was Oliver, exclamation mark, which won Best Score and would also go on to inspire one of the most successful long-running musicals of all time. Am I hinting at a future season? Yes, but not the next one. I have too many ideas for seasons. I have three or four years of seasons planned out. 
please like the show and stick around. Robbins, during that time, was working mostly in straight plays. He did, oh, dad, poor dad, mum has hung you in the closet and I'm feeling so sad, which is not a list of plays, but actually the title of a single play. And the Brecht play, Mother Courage and Her Children, again, a single title. Interesting fact, that play has a character who doesn't speak at all. So if you ever want to say, oh, I'm very into theatre, I know all of Katarina's lines in Mother Courage and Her Children, that sounds impressive, but is an accomplishment of learning zero lines. You're welcome. People didn't love Robbins at this time. I say that like everyone thought he was great at other points. People really didn't like him at this point because he had cooperated with the House Committee on Un-American Activities, which is commonly called McCarthyism. You know, finding all the commies. This made him, like, a little unpopular, you know, in the Broadway scene because, in their view, he'd sold out his collaborators, which, in fairness, he had. The next show he was offered was Funny Girl, with his response being a characteristic yes no. Yes. If there's one takeaway from this season, it's that Jerry is really talented and a really sucky collaborator. Sondheim was also offered this show as a lyricist, but he decided he wasn't really ready to do another backstage musical. Funny Girl was a massive success. Barbara Streisand played Fanny Bryce, the leading character, on stage and in the film. She was coached fairly extensively on her acting for this, which was the main fear that the rest of the production team had. In 1978, the original Anybody's, Lee Becker, now Lee Theodore, created The American Dance Machine, which hoped to create a living archive of Broadway theatre dance, and that the great theatre dancers can be saved from oblivion. Unless you're my editor, Ollie, you can't see my script, but I did do the little academic word, adiaz citation-y thingy. Serious academic writing, adding the citation thingy, because I respect this art form. I do actually have to write a serious thesis over the next year, and I'm not sure precisely how well this style is going to fly. If you've written completely ridiculous academic papers, uh, get in touch and let me know. How does that, how does that work? Do people like it? The American Dance Machine performed on Broadway between June and December of 1978, Lee Theodore supervised and directed the production, but it included choreography from Carousel, Brigadoon and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes by Agnes DeMille, Destry Rides Again and Can Can by Michael Kidd, Little Me by Bob Fosse, and the unsinkable Molly Brown by Peter Gennaro. New idea for a parody show, the unsinkable Millie, Billy Bobby, Millie Bobby Brown? Now I can't remember her name. There was no Jerome Robbins, though. My own personal headcanon is that Jerome Robbins was sour about not being included in this show, and so that's why he created Jerome Robbins Broadway. Do I have any evidence of this? No, it's a headcanon. Also, dear Jerome Robbins estate, I still think he's very talented, and if anyone wants to cast me in one of his pieces, please let them. Please and thank you. Gene Gavin, among others, were involved in the recreation of choreography, and Liza Gennaro made her Broadway debut in this show. Even though the show closed in 1978, the organization existed until 1987, teaching, recording, and reconstructing musical theatre dance pieces. From what I hear, it was kind of awesome. Two years later was a revival of West Side Story. As far as productions go, it was pretty identical to the original. Jerome Robbins directed, Lee Theodore came to help recreate choreography. So maybe he wasn't upset she didn't put him in a show... It's not exactly like West Side Story's choreography is going anywhere. Nearly all of the productions of West Side Story that exist use all or most of the original choreography. I auditioned for a school musical, and they used the original choreography. This particular production had Debbie Allen in the role of Anita. Cool fact, Debbie Allen choreographed Carrie on Broadway, which ran for four days. I'm going to quote directly from Broadway The Golden Years in order to express to you the scale of this next show. Staging Jerome Robbins Broadway involved a gargantuan undertaking costing $8.7 million. It involved five months of auditions, 
62 performers, 3 stage managers, 23 dressers, 27 musicians, and 33 stagehands. End quote. Begin shock and awe. (sighs) Comden and Green came in to help reconstruct portions of On the Town. Kevin Joe Johnson had a folder full of notes from 40 years earlier and is basically the only reason they didn't have to cut high button shoes on a Sunday by the sea. Robbins had searched high and low for anything to help him recreate that number. Reviews, pictures, people's memories. It wasn't until Kevin Joe Johnson showed up that this became even remotely possible. Rehearsals for this show were brutal. Ten hour days, five or six days a week. And all of this under Jerome Robbins. Like I said, brutal. A good number of the contributors to the book So You Want to Dance on Broadway were involved in this production. I note this because the book is full of anecdotes and it turned out to be really helpful. If you don't want to write your own memoir to be sold at approximately $15 as a paperback, may I suggest you go in with other people and create a book of anecdotes to be sold at about $15 as a paperback tips for how to get included in this podcast. For Luis Perez, his training began in ballet, and he came to the West Side Story tour as a solid sheet of technique and muscle. An amazing description of a person. According to him, the dancing wasn't grueling. We get it, you're talented. But singing and acting were more challenging. Clearly, the Broadway bug had bit him, though, and he did go on performing in Jerome Robbins' Broadway and to be a replacement dance captain. Julio Monge recounted that his salsa training was a significant part of the reason behind his casting. Although he's also quoted uh, saying about his performance in the Fiddler on the Roof scenes, Oy vey, a Puerto Rican Jew. Jim Bolsonaro came into the show as a replacement. It was actually West Side Story which had inspired him initially to go into the performing arts. He was a swing, which means he did everything, which sounds like a lot, but he loved it. Joanne M. Hunter also contributed to this book. She was originally a shark girl, but also understudied Maria. The show ran for two years to good houses, but still lost money because of how insanely expensive it was to run. We're talking about nearly half a million dollars a week. In the year 1999, it is reported that West Side Story had 221 major productions across high schools and colleges. It is firmly in the cultural zeitgeist. The next show I'm going to talk about is In the Heights. But Remy, you could hypothetically say, that isn't West Side Story. I know that, hypothetical audience member. In the Heights was written by Puerto Rican-American composer and lyricist Lin-Manuel Miranda. Very famous now for Hamilton. He cites West Side Story as a massive influence on his own show. In the Heights actually did its out-of-town tryouts in town, in New York, playing various small theatres until the team felt the show was ready for Broadway. The show focused on a largely Latino community in Washington Heights. That is the aforementioned Heights that the show is set in. The show's music and dance drew from the music and dance of those communities. It wins a lot of Tony Awards. Best Musical, Best Original Score Written for Theatre, Best Choreography, Best Orchestrations. It was also nominated for a lot more, and the show runs a little over three years. Lynn Renal Miranda also speaks Spanish. There are little pieces in and around in the Heights, uh, Pasión Se Fe, for example, but it really shone through when he was offered the opportunity to write some Spanish-language lyrics for the next revival of West Side Story. The revival took place in 2009, and it was directed by Arthur Lawrence. The choreography was reproduced by Joey McNeely and his associate Laurie Werner. Both were cast members in Jerome Robbins' Broadway, the former in the original cast and the latter as a replacement. This production starred Karen Olivo, who is a certified Broadway legend. Before that, she'd been a replacement in the original production of Rent. She'd played Faith in Brooklyn and played Vanessa in the original cast of In the Heights. Vanessa is the character who is not so subtly a little bit of a representation of Lin-Manuel Miranda's actual wife, Vanessa. They're not the same person, but but there's influences. Since then, she has played Angelica Schuyler in Hamilton on tour, and most recently, she played Satine in Moulin Rouge the Musical. Broadway legend. I rest my case. For her role in this show, she wins the Tony Award for Best Featured Actress in a Musical. 
What was particularly interesting about this production was that it was bilingual. The majority of the dialogue and songs from the sharks were in Spanish. I Feel Pretty, or I don't speak Spanish so I can't pronounce its alternative title, it's entirely in Spanish. The song is all Spanish and all amazing. It's really good. The revival ran until 2011. After that revival closed, the American Dance Machine came back in the form of American Dance Machine for the 21st Century. I'm pretty sure that one closing and the other coming back are not related events, except that they happen in the same city. Cheetah Rivera and Robert LaFosse from Jerome Robbins Broadway have worked with this new company. During the recent lockdowns, they produced a socially distanced version of Cool from West Side Story, as well as a version of Music and the Mirror from a chorus line. They have a partnership with Steps on Broadway and run classes. I mentioned earlier that pretty much every production of West Side Story has the same choreography. Not the 2020 revival. It has brand new choreography and brand new everything else. People in the performing arts tend to have really specific areas, dance, theatre, musical theatre. Often it gets even more specific. Classical theatre, ballet, contemporary ballet, golden age tap musicals. Even within tap dancing, the works of the syncopated ladies is worlds away in style and tone and expectations from someone like Randy Skinner. Because of this, it's always interesting when someone is known for and really steeped in a different performance niche comes to work on Broadway. And that's what we got with the 2020 revival. It was director Ivo Van Hove's fourth Broadway production and his first musical on Broadway. He is the artistic director of International Theatre Amsterdam, an organisation so Dutch it spells international with two A's before the L. He's known for his work in opera, but particularly in high concept theatre. Previously on Broadway, he directed The Crucible, Network, and A View from the Bridge. For Anne Theresa de Kermaker, the choreographer, and I apologise for mispronouncing your name, this show was her first on Broadway. She's a contemporary dance choreographer. Compared with someone like Jerome Robbins, she doesn't have a musical theatre background, or even work in more mainstream ballet, like someone like Justin Peck or Christopher Wheeldon. Compared with someone like Jerome Robbins, she doesn't have a musical theatre background, or even work in more mainstream ballet, like Justin Peck or Christopher Wheeldon. She's really well respected, but primarily in the types of circles that seek out high art contemporary dance. This production is fascinating. They use small, hyper-realistic sets with cameras hidden in them so that the image can be projected on a larger set. Lots of projections. They love their projections in this production. Try saying that five times fast. They love their projections in this production. They love their projections. La la la. <laughs> the production is brought up to the modern era. I've seen a clip of the musical number America from that production. And I have to be perfectly honest, America sans floofy skirts made me a little bit sad. Full disclosure, floofy skirts are my jam. The show only ran February to March of 2020. The COVID Broadway shutdown closed the show and it never reopened. Reopening may have also been complicated by allegations of inappropriate behaviour from the revival's producer, Scott Rudkin. It seems like there is a reckoning happening and I... I'm really curious as to where all the pieces fall. Then comes this year, and we have a new movie coming. The first movie introduced West Side Story to a massive, massive audience and made it a household name of a musical. There have been plenty of very successful musicals on Broadway that no one knows. I am personally very, very excited about this movie, and not just because the skirts do seem especially floofy, there are other reasons. Uh, I promise. I mean, there are Rita Morano, Mike Feist, Ansel Elgort, Ariana DeBose, Brian Darcy James, Ben Cook, Maddie Ziegler. I like Dance Moms. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. Justin Peck's choreography. I'm very excited for this movie. Also definitely not mad about the movie musical renaissance that's happening. <laughs> Uh, 
I am here with my in-laws who are probably the only people for whom my West Side Story is the best known of all the 50s musicals, um, Paradigm Don't Work. So I'm going to read them the list of shows and we're going to see how many they know. South Pacific. Yes. yes. Guys and Dolls. Yes. yes. The King and I. Yes. yes, definitely. Wonderful Town. No. Kismet. Yes. No. We have it on DVD. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Pajama Game. Yes. yes. Damn Yankees. Sort of. Mm, I don't think I've seen it. I've heard of it, but yeah. I haven't seen it. Um, My Fair Lady. Yes. <laughs> the Music Man. Not really. Mm, no, I've seen it once. I think. Redhead. No. No. Okay, so those are all of the shows that won uh, Best Musical in the 50s. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Um, and then also... Oh, when was Singing in the Rain? Wasn't that in the 50s? Uh, 60s? It didn't... I don't think it got a stage production until much later. Oh, okay. What... And then the other question are, what are your favourite musicals? Definitely My Fair Lady. I think I've seen that about 15 or 16 times. <laughs> yeah, My Fair Lady. Um, we do like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, although it's of questionable uh, questionable ethics. Yeah, I told someone I really like Tuck Everlasting, and they were like, uh, well, I was like, the music, though. <laughs> um, West Side Story. Um, what else? The flower drum song, though I think that might be a 60s one. Oh, I'm just asking your all time favourite musicals. Flower drum song was not too long. I love flower drum song. You probably don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I don't know that one. It's a Rodgers and Hammerstein show. It was the first show they ever used actual Chinese actors. Is Singing in the Rain a musical? It is a musical. Definitely that one. I like that one too. He sings it in his sleep sometimes. When it's raining and I'm sleeping. Yeah. Uh, this, thank you. This is amazing. And that's it for this episode, this season, and this year. I'm not stopping. I'm just taking the rest of November and December to write and record a little of the next season, as well as plan some new shows. What new shows? That's so exciting, Remy. Oh, I'm glad you said so. I'm also working on some live and pre-recorded shows with other people. The first of these is Pericles with The Acting Factory. If you want to hear about these projects, I'd recommend following me either on my personal Instagram at Remington Aidney or the production Instagram at Out of the Wings Media, and I will link both of those for you. And get excited! Our 2022 programming will be announced on January 1st. Um, We'll have an audio-only version of that announcement as well as a video version on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening, and I really hope you've enjoyed.